Tryon World's sophomore release, Defiance, is an MMO shooter based in the same universe as sci-fi's now certified hit TV show. Where the show takes place in St. Louis, the games takes place in San Francisco. There's no subscription, but you must buy the box to play the game. Once in, you can buy optional XP, money, and other boosts or vanity items to sweeten your experience. You play as an Ark Hunter, a gun for hire working your way through the world, uncovering its secrets and helping eccentric genius Von Bach recover Ark Tech to help save the world, and all that fun stuff. Things get a bit deeper than that as you go, and the game's storyline, while a mostly solo affair, is quite interesting. Though the show and game don't mix much yet, the shared universe, characters, races, and aesthetic go a long way to making a fan of one at home in the other. I've logged well over 30 hours with the game between diaper changes of my newborn and seen a good deal of the content that Defiance has to offer. I played on the PC with a mouse and keyboard and was provided a digital deluxe edition by Tryon's PR folk. There is also an Xbox 360 version and a PlayStation 3 version, but the three run on completely separate servers from one another. No cross-platform play here. Now, enough of that. Let's get to the ups and downs of the thing. The visuals of Defiance get some flack, and given the graphic horror nature of shooters, and I can see why. But to me, the game's vistas, modeling, and effects look great. It's no Terra or Guild Wars 2, and certainly no Planetside 2 in terms of MMO graphical beauty, but it has a charm and look all its own. I really think they nailed a lot of the outfits, the guns, the effects, the hellbugs, and other alien life forms are fantastic to look at and interact with. I also absolutely love the incubator weapon animation, which has little bugs that you shoot onto people, then they grow and pulsate and pop off and run around. It's awesome to behold. My main quibbles with Defiance's looks are in its muddy textures and herky-jerky animations. The running and jumping animations of just about every humanoid creature in Defiance are terrible sights to behold. They just seem off. Then, there's the UI. It works, but it's really obviously built from the ground up for the PS3 and Xbox users. It's just clunky as can be on the PC. Chat doesn't work well at all, voice or typed, but we'll get to that later. And let's not even talk about the combat music. Most of the score for Defiance is actually well done. It's just the wub-wub combat music you're quickly going to turn off in the settings if you can actually find it in the settings. Still, overall, Defiance is an attractive game with a clunky UI hampering it and some questionable music. The gameplay is where Defiance shines most. Above everything else I can say negative about Tryon's sophomore effort, I can't deny that it's fun and even addictive. There's something to be said for any MMO or shooter fan that Defiance's mix of massively multiplayer, gunplay, loot, and character progression all equal up to a pretty intoxicating bunch of just one more mission, match, emergency, or whatever. The Ego System, explained several times on this site and on other sites, is an interesting way to handle progression, and while it's not immediately apparent in a world where new spells and skills dominate, it's also a very robust way to differentiate your character or Arc Hunter. It may not seem like it at first, but as you progress deeper into the 5,000 Ego Point cap, yes, 5,000, you realize just how different you can be from the next guy, even if you share the same four core skills. This is a shooter primarily, not an RPG, so one can hardly fault the team for letting the guns do most of the talking. And there are a lot of guns. It's not quite the breadth and scope of, say, Borderlands, but Defiance gives you a lot of loot to tweak, adjust, add modifications to, and it'll likely be some time before you figure out what works best for your playstyle. I personally have taken quite a liking to fully auto assault rifles, SMGs, and a decent grenade lobber. In case you were wondering. The best parts of Defiance's overall gameplay are in the open world. There's something truly special about the Arcfall events, the roving army against Hellbug mentality that it creates, and the way Shadow War PvP folds seamlessly into the open world, even if it's still an optional thing. The instance content isn't bad, per se, and in fact there's a lot of fun to be had in the co-op missions which act, which act as Defiance's dungeons. But they're not nearly as enticing as the massive open world mayhem which is Defiance at its finest. 
There are your typical missions, of which you can only work on one at a time, and other challenges like vehicle speedruns, hotshot skill tests, and other such distractions, but the bulk of your time will likely be spent progressing the story and working on the random open world events that pop up. The only real reason to complete the time trials and other challenges are the pursuits, Defiance's achievement system, which will help you earn extra outfits, titles, and other stuff like that. One of my chief complaints against Defiance early on is that everyone is the same when they come out of the tutorial. You all wear the same thing and have the same abilities. Like any good MMO, this changes after a few hours of time spent unlocking other gear and gaining more weapons, but I still can't shake the feeling that players should be able to choose the colors of their outfits. If Tryon ever made them, uh, the dyes, something that could cost a little real-world money, they'd fund the development for months. No, the biggest complaint I can levy against Defiance is that while there are certainly a lot of things to do in the game, it all pretty much involves running and shooting. And what would I expect, right? It's an online shooter. But there are no real downtime activities to take part in. Modifying weapons via the salvage matrix is a poor man's crafting, but it is an act of patience more than something worth spending time on. Maybe for many gamers, a world to run around and shoot stuff is all they need. But if you're an MMO player who likes fluff along with their combat, you're not going to find much of it in Defiance. I also want to point out that the PvP, while fun, is a mixed bag due to some serious cheating. Cheaters and aimbotters are an issue. Heck, it's even been noted by the developers on the community blog. As is the practice of bunny hopping as a combat tactic. Tryon says they're actively on the tail of cheaters, and hopefully that's true. But they should also likely patch in a diminishing return mechanic, maybe just a stamina bar for jumping in PvP situations. Then there's the notion that the damage is handled on the client side of things. Yes, the damage is handled on the client side, not the server, for sort of lag and, you know, timing and ping issues. But you can't really fix that, maybe. So what you have to do then is work constantly to fight cheaters and hackers who are modifying their own damage on their client. You can see where I'm going with this. The PvP is going to wind up useless and frustrating forever, as opposed to the incredible fun it can be when it's rolling on all cylinders. And let's not get started on the AI. The mobs in this game are either superhuman shooters or completely useless morons. There's no in-between, and they seem to randomly switch between the two roles whenever they feel like it. Despite its faults, Defiance's core gameplay is incredibly fun. It's not hyper-realistic shooting, and it could use a real cover mechanic if you ask me, but it's addictive and relatively novel in an MMO. Yes, the main bulk of Defiance is fun, let's put it that way, but there are other issues holding it back from being a truly great experience. Now, right in line with the bits on the open-world content, the best parts of Defiance are the parts when you play alongside other people. Co-op is a blast, and camaraderie is easy to find in PvP and the Shadow War. Massing roving, roving armies for Arc Falls are always fun to be a part of, and the game engine handles the numbers quite well. You can play Defiance with other people around you at all times, and yet, you'll feel alone. See, except in the cases where you get into co-op missions and find a nice chatty group of people to speak with over the improving voice over IP, Defiance is a mostly silent world. The chat just doesn't work very well, and even on the PC, most people don't use it. There's little to zero reason to be in a clan, and along with the above critiques, there's no real reason outside of the occasional co-op groups to socialize. You'll just run around with other people, shoot stuff, and then go on your way. You just won't communicate with them. Now, Defiance has come a really long way since beta. It's mostly stable now, and I don't really run into bugged missions or have trouble queuing up for content these days. For the most part, the game works, but... The UI is clearly made for consoles, as I said before, with the PC as an afterthought. The voice over IP is still in terrible shape more often than not. The terrain clipping makes for some truly crazy accidental 180 degree vertical jumps on your ATV, and many other little things all chip away at this title's score. And what can I say about the disappearing items in people's inventory? Could you imagine finding a gun that's so epic you want to hold on for it to forever? And then when you log back into the game, it just disappears without a reason or proof? In a game that's largely about what guns you have, a fault like this is pretty infuriating. Now, for a casual gamer or someone who just plays an hour or two here or there, there's enough content in Defiance to last a good few months, and by then we'll likely to start to see uh, some of the first DLC plans, which should include new missions, new races, and so forth. There's a lot to do for a shooter fan if you can get past the frustrating lack of polish. 
The pursuits will definitely keep the completionist busy for a while. The contract system, daily and weekly achievements, is a good way to mask a reputation gear grind as well. Seriously, they're often fun to hunt down, and some of the best items you can buy can be found on reputation vendors. With no real social interaction, though, and almost zero reason to begin a second character, why would you when you can unlock everything on one and there are no alternate paths through content, I'm afraid the most hardcore gamers will be through with Defiance's content in just a few weeks. In fact, I'm betting more than a few of you will come in here and tell me you're done with the main content and waiting for more. The DLC is going to be almost necessary for any fan to keep the love of the game alive. And let's talk about innovation. There are, simply put, not many MMO shooters on the market. If you're not much of a PvP guy, chances are you won't find a home in Planetside 2. Defiance, alongside the perennially in beta Firefall, is the PvE gamer's best hope for an MMO shooter until Bungie's Destiny comes out. There are also a lot of interesting ideas at play with the open world content, the ego progression system, and the sort of lateral progression it proposes. Plus, when was the last time you played an MMO that ran hand in hand with a TV show? The shooting and regular instant content is just meh. There's nothing you haven't seen before. You see, the novelty of being in an MMO persistent world and shooting stuff will run out, and what you're going to be left with is a game that is neither a great MMO or a great shooter. It's just kind of okay at both. That is to say, however, that the game isn't worth a purchase. You see, if we're going to talk about value, the price of a box will get you an MMO that you don't have to pay a subscription for. Much like Guild Wars 2, the buy-to-play model serves Defiance well. For those who want to spend a little extra, there's a cash shop, but the items within it are nothing to get riled up over. Boosts to your script, the in-game currency, some XP boosts and resources uh, will help players advance faster, but in a game that's entirely about the skill, you won't be able to buy better aim. Of course, you could always hack your way to that, as we said before. And since you can't straight up buy some uber weapon to snipe people with, I see no faults with the cash shop in Defiance. The only real questionable purchase is the lockbox. It's something you can easily earn with in-game currency, mind you, but for those who have the cash, you can just start buying the lockboxes, which will give you a chance of getting a really decent weapon, sort of a, a random loot box. Now, like I said, you can buy these with in-game currency really easily. I had no trouble affording them, but it's still there. You could buy it with cash, so your mileage may vary. So anyway, what do we come down to? Here's what to take away from this review. Defiance is a really fun game despite its numerous rough edges, but can that fun overcome its mediocrity? That would likely be up to each individual gamer. If you're hankering for an online PvE-centric shooter that's out of beta, Defiance may be for you. If you're a mega fan of the show and like to game, it's also probably a no-brainer. But if you're looking for a polished and complete experience to rival other MMOs on the market, you might be better off waiting to see if Tryon can remedy the problems marring Defiance's launch. If the blogs from the studio are any indication, Defiance could wind up being a true diamond in the rough. But it's going to take some time to get there, and hopefully it will, before we all forget this game even exists. Thank you for watching our video review of Defiance. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at MMORPGcom without the dot. You can find me on Twitter at TheBillMurphy. Until next time, don't let a bad pug get you down.